Hello, everybody. Uh, let's get started. You're going to have to listen to me for about a minute and a half before you get to the stuff you really came for. So I'm Lisa Curcio Guest, and I'm Commodore of Chicago Yacht Club. It is my great honor and privilege. <laughs> Thank you. To welcome all of you to the club, uh, members, guests, all of our crew competitors, we are so happy to have you here for the 114th Race to Mackinac presented by Wintrust. Thank you. In addition to Wintrust, we have other sponsors who help support this race along with other activities around the club. Uh, Mount Gay Rum, <laughs> an ever popular favorite. Team One Newport, all that gear. Blue Plate Catering. I better put these glasses on. I'm not going to be able to read. <laughs> Evolution Sales. Noble Oak. Samuel Adams. British Virgin Islands. Dream Yacht Worldwide. Harkin. Mackinac Island Ferry Company. Mission Point Resort and Predict Wind. Thank you to all our sponsors. Finally, I want to thank, first of all, the MAC committee. They start working on every year's race about a week and a half after they get back from the island. They have been working for a year to put this race together. Um, our, our race committee, or I'm sorry, MAC committee chair, Sam, Bayou is already racing. He's hoping to not float the entire way up. Uh, our vice chair, Wynne Soldani, is here uh, to help uh, move the, the proceedings forward. In addition to our MAC committee, our race committee. And I think you all appreciate what the race committee does. Remember to thank them. They also put in countless hours to make sure that this race comes off. And it's not just here, it's on the island. So when you're tired, uh, maybe you won't be wet this year, but when you get up there, just try to smile a little bit for the race committee. Thank you. Um, we also have the support of an incredible staff at this club, um, our on the water staff, our food and beverage staff, our management, everybody works really tirelessly to make sure that everybody has as best time as they can. So thank you very much. Uh, you're going to, I think, see uh, some Coast Guard folks here in a little bit, and you'll see them out on the race course. Thank them as well. They make sure that we stay safe on the way up to the island. So have a great race. I will see you on the island. Thank you so much. All right. Welcome back to everyone that it's a welcome back for, and welcome to those of you who haven't been here before. Uh, I'm Wynn Saldani. As Lisa said, I'm the vice chair of the race. Sam Bayou, the chair, he started about uh, an hour and a half ago. So he's maybe North Avenue by now. Uh, ser ser reports are Fullerton is actually seriously what I've heard. Um, on behalf of the race to Mac committee, on, uh, on behalf of the club, thank you for coming. Uh, I've got a number of kind of formalities to go through here. Uh, bear with me for a second as we do these and we'll get into the program a little bit. This meeting is a courtesy service and the invited competitor or person in charge is responsible for reading and understanding NOR, SIRS and rating certificate rules. You're reminded of the racing rules of sailing, particularly uh, rule number two about fail, fair sailing and that the decision to race is the, the decision of the competitor only. Uh, you see QR codes uh, all over the place about how to connect with us. Please connect to, with us. We've got the hashtag CYCRTM. Uh, I'll be doing some videos on YouTube during the race for people to follow along. If you like doing that, I always enjoy doing that. We're, uh, if you have a vote Twitter feed, please let us know about it. Please, you know, reach out to us in DMs. Um, and there's a communications email address, also communications uh, at chicagoyachtclub.org for you to reach out to us. Um, for transponders, and I'm going to need help with this in a second, Jen. We have three people still to pick up their transponders. It's Fox, NV, and Rambler. Rambler are the three books. Yeah, and as you guys have seen in years past, we have a link from the homepage uh, to find the tracker. The tracker hasn't changed a heck of a lot in utility, so 
please share this, have your friends and family follow along um, on the mobile app, on their desktop. It's a great way to sort of follow along the race and you might have a lot of time to pass here uh, <laughs> as the race goes on. Once we get up to Nakano Island, we wanna remind everyone that it is a uh, clean marina. So please reduce, reuse, recycle. There are marked garbage cans up there. There's no fueling from portable cans on the DNR docks. Um, there are ways to arrange to get yourself fuel on the way out. Uh, please use biodegradable detergents for washing the boats. Uh, if you're in a slip, you will have access to shore power. If you're rafted off that slip, you will not have access to shore power. Sorry about that. We can't accommodate that. It's not safe. Um, there is no swimming in the marina also. You guys have, have seen that note um, uh, for a number of good reasons. And finally, there's a whole new boaters facility up there with bathrooms, new bathrooms. I understand it opened a week ago. It's brand new. And we've been asked to tell you no food or drink in the bathrooms. Um, so take that as you will, but please, I want to remind everyone, and uh, we say this every year, we're guests at Mackinac Island, right? So we're there, it's their home year round. Um, please, you know, we, we try to, to really respect the fact that they live there um, and take good care of the place and be good citizens when we're out there. So please do that so we continue to be uh, invited back and it's not the, the race to somewhere else. We really appreciate Mac Island and all that they do. So help us thank them too. Thank you. Uh, two last pieces of business here, the porch party on Sunday afternoon. We still have tickets available for that. The front desk here can help you if you have people going up to the island. This is a great time. And then one thing that I, I, it's a little bit of a personal element for me too that I wanted to sort of pause on before moving on. You all saw emails about this thing the Mac gives back. Um, I'm on the board of the Chicago Yacht Club Foundation also. We have a vote on a program that we work with, Inland Seas. They help uh, underserved uh, individuals get on the water, underserved kids get on the water. They do kind of a seven day cruise. Uh, they're on their way actually, they left here Wednesday and they're on their way to Sutton's Bay right now. So you might catch them. Um, on a tall, tall ship, England seas, wave if you do, right? Um, and, and in addition to that, we reached out to you, the skippers and the crews of, of the race, and we're trying to connect with getting more people on the water from the MAC race. So we put a couple hundred kids who otherwise wouldn't have been on the water on the water last week because of this program. And it's really, I, I think, a nice thing to do to move the sport forward, to get people who otherwise might not see Lake Michigan ever in their lives, you know, out on the water and, and, and sailing because look what it's done for all of us. So thank you all for that. Thank you. By the way, you can take that, look what it's done for all of us in several different ways. I mean it in the, in the, <laughs> in the positive sense, the sense of the word. So at this point, I wanna hand the program over to Jen. Jen Steffler, our principal race officer. Please give her a round of applause and a huge thank for her and her team. Thank you. All right, so it was not a screaming start out there, but it wasn't terrible. I'm gonna, I'll leave it to Chris, but we'll really hope that it continues tomorrow. So one thing that we changed this year is where check-in is. There is not a boat for check-in this year. So all boats need to pass by the end of Navy Pier inside the two orange buoys that'll be out there, go up around and down outside of the yellow. So remind, it's a reminder, you can't go through the lighthouse gap. You'll be in the way of the boats that are starting. So the end of Navy Pier, you'll get acknowledged by the race committee, just like you would on a boat. You'll get a wave, you'll get looked at. So you'll still get acknowledged, um, but that is where check-in is at the end of Navy Pier. There is no boat. The other thing is because of the configuration, we're, the rules this year are your signboard should be forward of the mast at check-in only. So for them to go, to be able to see you before you're already gone, have your signboard forward of the mast. So once you check in, you go down, this is the starting area. Uh, we'll introduce the EXO or the captain of the Cap May Bay in a few minutes. The Coast Guard will be off to the east end of the start line. And remember there is a no-go zone north east-ish of the start line and south of the start line unless you are in sequence. 
So it is a 10 minute sequence, but please let everybody else have the space to start when they're in sequence. Um, so the pin boat will be Anna Marie, that's the east boat and carrier will be the, or the west boat, sorry, long day on the water. Um, carrier will be on the east end. So this is Anna Marie, it's the same pin boat we had last year. Thank you, Kurt Lunch and team for loaning it to us again. And then we'll have our signal ship carrier out there. Um, you'll also see some official flags out there. The judge boat will be out there. You'll have course marshals, press and VIP boats. These are the only boats that can be in the exclusion zone during the start unless your color flag is in sequence. So I'd like to introduce the judges. I saw Rick, is everybody else here? So it, stand up, here's Rick Mallinson. He is our chief judge. Lance Smotherman. Where's Lance? Oh, he's way in the back. You can see his head. John Porter, who's in front of him. You can't see him quite as well.
Okay. <laughs> All right. So let me check. Uh, we have some weather information online uh, at the at the, this website. There's a, a few uh, files you can download, also some direct access to weather maps and stuff. All right. As always is the case, we have to talk about severe weather. We talked about it a lot last year. This year, not quite so much. Um, but it is a risk. So even tomorrow, there is a chance of some thunderstorms around. Not looking for anything severe, and anything that does happen will be nothing on the scale or magnitude that we had we had last year. But we should be alert and and watching for these things. We're going to talk a little bit more about this later on. And that possibility of of severe weather or thunderstorms, general thunderstorms, continues into Sunday, Monday. Again, pretty low risk, but we do have a cold front coming down into the northern part of the Great Lakes, and that could help generate some showers and thunderstorms up there. All right. So here's where we are right now. We've got a low pressure area that's out to the east in uh, southeast Ontario, southern Quebec, and a high pressure area that's over sort of the central plains. Between that high and that low, there is a pressure gradient. And if you look closely at this chart, you can see three millibars, three isobars basically across the Great Lakes region. This morning there were four. Now there's three. Oops, can you hear me? Tuck, tuck. We've lost contact. I don't know what's going on. Help. That's the one two. We're down again. No, nope. no. All right, I'll, I'm going to yell. Um, so, so uh, we don't have the pressure gradient across the Great Lakes that we had had this morning. All right, so uh, and that process is going to continue. We're going to continue to weaken that that pressure gradient over over the next twelve hours. That high pressure that's out to the west of us is going to gradually move in closer, and that's going to decrease the, the wind speed across the lake, which means that local breezes, sea breezes, and lake breezes become much more important. Um, and that's going to be the case for tomorrow for sure. Here's the satellite uh, picture. You can see, look on here, that it's clear over the lake. That's typical because the air is cooler and it's sinking over the lake surface clearing out the clouds. On the land, the land is heating up and we're getting uh, some thermals and some cloud development on the land. And you can see where that lake breeze extends into the, uh, into the shore because there's a sharp boundary between where there's no clouds and there are clouds. Keep that in mind because you're gonna see that just about right over here tomorrow afternoon when you're starting. That clear line is gonna be right here. All right, so here's the uh, radar picture. And uh, again, we do have some stuff up to the northwest, up ar around Minnesota, up in the northern plains and the, the southern portion of Canada. There's cold air pooling along, and that cold air is, is slowly moving down. And you'll, you can see that on here, not so much from what's on the surface weather map, but by these showers and cells that are developing up in the upper plains. That cold air is coming in over land that is being warm. And so it's destabilizing the atmosphere. So we're starting to get showers and cells up across Minnesota uh, and, the, and the Dakotas and even northern Wisconsin because of that cold air aloft that's coming overhead. That slug of cold air aloft is going to come down and be over Wisconsin tomorrow and then move across the lake tomorrow night and over Michigan uh, on, um, on Sunday. All right. And that's going to be important, could, could be important for tomorrow. All right, so here's where the lake breeze is today for the wind situation today. We had a pretty strong uh, northern, and not pretty strong, a moderate northern wind this morning, about 12 or 15 knots blowing down the lake, and it actually built some sea state up here in the southern part of the lake as well. This afternoon, because those isobars were opening up, we're getting less gradient coming down. Now the thermal took over. So this afternoon, the thermal has taken over, and a lake breeze has developed on this shore, and that's that's exactly what we see uh, here at the moment and we see on this chart here. So the winds shifted around and are now more from the east 
uh, blowing in uh, to the lake shore. All right, here's to see the waves are higher in the southern part of the lake, all that due to the wind blowing down the lake overnight. Now that the wind is dying over the lake, those those uh, seas are going to subside substantially. Lake temperature, we've got to talk about lake temperature because the temperature of the lake relative to the temperature of the land determines whether or not we can have thermal lake breezes or, or land breezes. So when the lake is cooler than the land, then that's when we have uh, uh, lake breezes, and that will be the case uh, tomorrow. And the southern part of the lake is, is the warmest part of the lake. Not surprising right now. It's sort of in the low to mid 70s, which is about normal for this time of year. It's going to be in the 80s on shore tomorrow. So not a huge temperature difference, but enough to, to generate lake breeze. Then as you go up the lake, it gets a little bit cooler uh, in the mid and upper 60s in the middle part of the lake and even up into the low 60s in the northern part of the lake. All right, tomorrow morning, uh, we're, you'll notice that there's basically, if you look closely at this chart, there's one ice bar left on the Great Lakes and it's out to the, to the east. That means we have very little gradient pressure here. We've got high pressure, though, out to the west of us. And that, that, high, that high is actually kind of moving south and east. So it's going to drop south of the Great Lakes. It's not going to move directly overhead. So think about the circulation around a high pressure. It's going to be uh, basically from the west, north of the high pressure, and then from the northwest in the northeast quadrant of the high pressure. So that's that's where we're going to be uh, tomorrow and then into uh, to um, uh, tomorrow night. And here's the surface wind field forecast for tomorrow morning, around uh, just after sunrise. Pretty light breeze on the lake. You can see there's land breezes and just a touch of gradient across the southern portion of the lake. All right. And as a result of the winds dying, the sea state will come down as well. All right. Weather forecast map for tomorrow afternoon. Notice we had a low moving away with all the showers and stuff moving away. Now there's they're analyzing a big H over northern uh, Indiana, but they're also analyzing the possibility of showers and thunderstorms, not only close to that high pressure, but also in the area to the northwest over uh, Il uh, Wisconsin, northern Illinois, and Minnesota. That's that area that I pointed to on the radar shifting down over us. So that's that's the, where the air is destabilizing. So even though we're, we have nice weather, um, or, you know, higher pressure uh, over us, we still will have a chance of uh, showers and, and isolated thunderstorms tomorrow. Excuse me. Yeah, of course. Uh, all right, so, so, so this, so we have that, that uh, destabilized air and the uh, unstable air coming over us. Tomorrow afternoon, we're going to have a lake breeze. So we have enough temperature difference uh, going on between the uh, lake and the, and the land to draw the thermal control on shore. However, with that high down to the south, now we're also going to have a little bit of westerly gradient starting to develop. And that's what, what, what we, we will see over the uh, Illinois, northern Illinois and Wisconsin uh, tomorrow. And um, so, so you see this down here, just within a few miles of the shore on this forecast, there's a little uh, steep, uh, lake breeze going for around five, maybe seven, eight knots of, of lake breeze. Out in the middle of the lake, though, all the air is sinking. It's dropping down, so there's no wind over the middle of the lake. It's all right along the shore. Then there's some leftover gradient and, and uh, westerly, southwesterly breeze over on the uh, Michigan shore. Great. So we got to we start in a lake breeze. That's wonderful. So now, if I can figure out how to. There we go. Thank you. All right. And uh, so, what I want to point out, though, is because of that lake breeze and because of the cooler air that's sitting over, over us, now we have to start worrying about what we're doing. The first place that showers could develop is where there's the convergence between the, the uh, westerly gradient and the and the lake breeze. 
So the air is coming together at that line. That line that I said is going to be right over the city tomorrow, uh, midday. And that's going to cause some vertical development. And up into this atmosphere now, which is higher altitude, is becoming unstable. So we'll start to see those cumulus start to get more vertical development and possibly in the showers. On the right here is the wind map uh, for noon tomorrow. On the left is the wind uh, field, but also it'll show you where precipitation is developed. 